And now, from Pasadena, it's CCN Sunrise with Sunita Joshua Madison, Paulo Alejandria, the Crown City News team, and the CCN Sunrise segment stars. It's time to wake up San Gabriel Valley with CCN Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad to have you here with us this Christmas week. We have some fun for you with Adriana Sanchez showing you how you can wear the hot color trend for the new year. I'm Sunita Joshua Madison. And I'm Lee Cuellar. Jennifer Driscoll from the Pasadena Public Library Children's Library is also here to share the best holiday books to read with your kids. Speaking of holidays, you know, are you going anywhere? Are you, are you, do you have any fun travel planned? Or? Well, we have big, uh, big Christmas uh, at the family's, uh, at the uh, family's house and off to Chicago for New Year's. Oh, you're Eve. going to Chicago. Yes. I need, cr I need some crappy weather. I know. You know, you know we all need a little bit. You just need like two days of it, right? right? And then you're like, I got to get back to That's Southern right. California. Mittens, overcoats, and then I'm good for two days. That's I'm about headed it. to Mexico myself. Wow. Which is kind of odd, you know, to, my parents are coming from Michigan where it's always the polar vortex and white Christmas so it's gonna be different but right. we're super excited. A great place never, to, to celebrate why not? Never been on a cruise before so we'll see how it goes. All right. <laughs> all right and before we go any further with the news uh, we have uh, all we'd like to thank all of our sponsors who make this show possible. Crown City News is sponsored by Foothill Transit, San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership, Pasadena Federal Credit Union, Senior Providers Network, Ability First, Beacon Media News, EH Financial, Ganal Lumber, Siren Arts Productions. Thank you for your support of Crown City News. Okay. Now it's time for Crown City News with CCN's Paolo Alejandria. And now, CCN, Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood starts right now. Hi, Sunita and Lee. Here's a look at some headlines making news right here in the San Gabriel Valley. Almost 50% of parolees with outstanding warrants or court violations were arrested during a law enforcement compliance sweep known as Operation Silent Night. On Wednesday, December 17th, the West San Gabriel Valley Anti-Crime Task Force conducted large-scale checks of probation compliance aimed at low-risk inmates shifted from the state to the counties due to AB 109 prison realignment efforts. Many of the court violations included weapons charges, assault charges, and property crimes. Of the 61 locations where officials made contact, 30 arrests were made for offenses such as probation violations, narcotics, and weapons possessions. Another 27 location checks confirmed that the parolees were either not home or no longer at the location. The task force comprised of detectives from Arcadia, Pasadena, South Pasadena, Monrovia, El Monte, Monterey Park, police departments, as well as the L.A. County Probation and the Altadena and Temple, Temple stations of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. A big sinkhole snarled up traffic December 15th in Alhambra. Public Works responded after the calls that the pavement had collapsed at a busy intersection. CCN's newest reporter, Hannah Townsley, has the report. A giant sinkhole blocked the intersection of Mission Road and Margarita Avenue Monday in Alhambra. The Alhambra Police Department Sergeant Jerry Johnson says it didn't look like a water main break created the sinkhole. We know for sure that it didn't come from a broken water main and it did not come from a broken sewer pipe. Uh, oftentimes that's what you'll see. Uh, you'll see the water main break and then there's a big hole that develops. That's not what this was. Sergeant Johnson says authorities still aren't sure what caused the rupture. I talked to the director of public works a short time ago and right now they can't be absolutely sure of anything. They're still looking into it, still trying to determine exactly what happened. Many construction workers and gas company crews were called out to work since the concrete had sunk near a gas line. There is a gas line that runs in this, in this area and uh, our public works people of course uh, wanted to make sure that they weren't going to uh, a break or rupture that gas line. Uh, the good news is that no one in the area has any interruption in utilities. Everyone has gas and water and sewage and telephone, electric. Everybody uh, has their services. Police rerouted traffic for three days as crews worked to fill the sinkhole, then sent out a community-wide message letting travelers know they reopened the intersection on Wednesday. In Alhambra, Hannah Townsley, CCN. Just how easily can a Christmas tree light on fire? Faster than the jolly fat man can slip down the chimney. Passing the police and fire came together to share safety tips to help prevent tragedies this season. CCN's Andy Rocco has the story. 
Hello everyone, I'm Andy Rocco. We're at the Pasadena Fire Station where Fire Chief Washington and Police Chief Sanchez will be discussing holiday safety tips. Christmas is the season to be jolly, and that's just what the Pasadena Fire Department 33 believe in. But they also emphasize the importance of being safe. First thing, make sure your tree doesn't dry out. Needles on fresh trees should be green and should not fall off very easily. Don't put your tree up too early or leave it up too long after Christmas. Uh, dried out trees can easily ignite and create fires. The chief highlighted several items that could cause a fire tragedy. He then demonstrated just how instantly a tree can catch fire and produce significant heat. Police Chief Sanchez focused on precautions folks need to take for this year's robes parade and what parade goers are not permitted to bring. One thing new on the list is not quite expected with the average parade goer. As has been the uh, issue in uh, recent days with uh, drones, uh, we're asking our parade uh, goers uh, not to bring commercial drones or recreational drones to the Rose Parade. It is a permitted event, and what I mean by that is that the Tournament of Roses has secured uh, uh, permits for the parade route. Drones uh, will not be allowed. Pasadena Fire Chief mentioned many safety tips to keep your holiday season safe. Ones that he mentioned specifically were to not overload your power outlets, make sure your tree is watered, and to check the batteries on your smoke detectors. In Pasadena, Andy Rocco, Crown City News. That's all the news for now. I'll have more for you in the second half hour. Back to you, Sunita and Lee. Thanks, Paulo. Now for the morning buzz and the historic thawing of our relationship with Cuba. Steve Lambert, strategic specialist with 2020 Network and former editor and publisher with the Pasadena Star News is here with us. You know, it just seems that Obama is becoming bolder and bolder as a lame duck president. I mean, this is a pretty historic decision here. Oh, it's very historic. Uh, you know, there's the old saying that you keep your uh, friends close and your enemies closer. And I think that's, you know, a big part of this. But. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's significant, too, because um, I, I think our policies for the last 50 years have essentially contributed to the oppression of people in an entire country. And I don't think that serves them well, and I don't think it serves us well. Do you think this is going to really make a change? I mean, a lot of people are saying that, you know, the Castro regime hasn't made any changes to you know, have, have gotten this kind of deal with us and that they are getting more out of the deal than we are. Do you, th do you agree with that, Lee? I sure do, yeah. <clears throat> what do you think about that? Uh, it seems to me that uh, I'm drawing a complete blank. <laughs> Cuba, we're talking Cuba here. You're, you can go visit. Maybe you're thinking mojitos. I should go visit. Maybe I don't have to go through Canada yeah, right. by the time this is over. To right? get your cigars? That's right. Um, no, I, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We've been doing the same thing over and over for 50 years, and it hasn't improved anything. It hasn't. And you know what? They have some really good allies that we need access to, and we can do that with having a partnership with Cuba. But turning our nose to them and pretending that they don't exist, it's not going to help us. No. And it's not going to help them, as you, you mentioned as well. I mean. If their people are going to change or if their government is going to change, and Raul Castro, you know, maybe he's not making sweeping changes, but even little steps is, is a huge difference. Oh, totally. And, you know, we, we live in a very different world right now um, where we have access to everything. And some of the things we're going to be talking about in a little bit relate to that. But, but shutting the doors on this one small pocket of our planet for reasons that we're still not entirely sure of after 50 years, doesn't really make a lot of sense. But speaking of weird regimes, regimes, the North Korea cyber terrorists, you know, they bomb free speech here in the U.S. Is this a big blow to free speech here, or are we just blowing hot air over a sophomoric movie? No, I think it's very significant, um, and it's. I think we have to be careful in terms of the free speech part of it. I think it's more the extortion part of it. Because we live at a time where, uh, because of access to technology, because of hacking, because of cyber hacking, uh, you can basically force people to do just about anything now. This is huge. I mean, they're taking down a huge corporation. And not just Sony. This affects the movie chains. I mean, 
you know, I, I don't know if I'm a huge uh, Seth Rogen fan, but this was set to make a, a decent penny. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm amazed that we bowed, that we, you know, that the yeah. theater, the chain owners are saying they're not going to, they're not going to broadcast the movie. Uh, yeah. Because of because of North Korea and uh, their apparent involvement in the uh, in the hack. Yeah, and you look historically at our film industry. Charlie Chaplin played Adolf Hitler. I think the Three Stooges killed Hitler in one of their <laughs> one of their shows. Um, you know, this is this is not a new form of art, but now it's really under siege. And again, it gets back to the technology we have today and what you can do with that. The, the extortion you can levy on, on whether it's a, a movie theater or a, a company, GM, whatever, uh, it's, it's pretty frightening. Absolutely, and you know, the fact that North Korea is such a closed off regime, but they have a, you know, a department just set up for this cyber terrorism, and they're so advanced in it, obviously. It's right. a very scary thing. Yes. Speaking of mojitos, nice Cuban ones, too much alcohol makes us all a little foggy. But it can have a bigger impact seniors and their, on seniors and their memory. Mary Winters has more on that next in the Senior Solutions segment. Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. During these holidays, there are more fires in the home than any other time of the year. By following a few simple tips from Shriners Hospitals for Children, you could keep your home's fire safe and your kids burn free this holiday season. Place your tree at least three feet away from any open fire or heat source. Always inspect lights for frayed wires, kinks, or bare spots before putting them up. Connect lights and other electrical decorations to proper extension cords. Never leave lit candles unattended. Learn how you can be burn aware at beburnaware.org. A little too much eggnog this holiday season, and we might not remember this fun quite as much as we'd like. But for seniors, alcohol makes a bigger impact on already diminishing memory. Mary Winters is here with her senior solutions to tell us about the effect. Remember Bill and Ted on their excellent adventure? Party on, dudes! Well, an article from Johns Hopkins, the middle-aged brain is definitely affected by alcohol, but does it affect our memory as we get older? In our middle age, drinking, especially binge drinking, is being associated with dementia. So what's binge drinking? According to a study in ep epidemiology, it's considered to be consuming more than five bottles of beer or one bottle of wine in one occasion during the month. If you drink to the point of passing out at least two times a year, your risk of dementia increases 10 times. The interesting thing is that mild to moderate drinking is thought to actually have a protective effect on memory. It's not really understood, but they think it's due to alcohol moderation and that it can be helpful with blood flow and hopefully the reduction of TIAs or strokes. The Journal of the American Medical Association claims that a person who drinks one to eight glasses of alcoholic beverages in a week reduces your chance of dementia by 54%. So what's the right amount of alcohol to consume? Too much, too little, just right? In other words, what is your Goldilocks factor? We know what too much looks like 
and not drinking at all, well, it's not drinking. And so let's see, not providing that supposed uh, protective barrier um, in drinking, uh, when you're not drinking, the right amount for men is equal to no more than two alcoholic beverages a day. This is the same for women, but if you're at risk of breast cancer, you really need to talk with your doctor because drinking may put you at a higher risk of breast cancer, so you may want to avoid alcohol altogether. So if you've never been a drinker, you don't need to start. If you're drinking outside of the Goldilocks factor, you want to consider your dementia risk within your alcoholic consumption. So Lee and Sunita, back to you. And when you start seeing Goldilocks, so when you're drinking, it might be time to cut it off. I'm thinking so. Thanks for that, Mary. Well, you know, me personally, I like to choose which master suite I want to sleep in every night. I just need to know the mood of which master suite to go to. That's right. <laughs> Two master suites. That's just one of the many trends coming to homes next year. I'll tell you about others in the CCN Your Home segment next. I've got a job to do today. I have got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Realtor.org just released their list of the biggest trends for the new year, and I'm seeing lots of coral in the future. Well, there are a lot. They have like, what, 21 trends that are out there. For me, it's all about storage because I need a place for my junk. I love those like hidden storage, like under the stairs. The stairs are the most underutilized storage area, aren't they? Absolutely right. And we all we are conspicuous consumers, is what I like to I like to say. At the end of the year, uh, we read all kinds of reports and forecasts for the coming year. This year is no different. The good people at Realtor.org, the website for the National Association of Realtors, have compiled a list of hot housing trends for 2015. And here are my top five. First. Coral shades. A blast of new color is often the easiest change for sellers to make, offering the biggest bang for their buck. Sherwin Williams says Coral Reef, number 6606, is 2015's color of the year because it reflects the country's optimism about the future. We have a brighter outlook now that we're out of the recession. Use this color on an accent wall. Pair it with crisp white, gray, or similar saturations of lilac, green, and violet. Second, off-the-shelf architectural plans. Who among us hasn't daydreamed about buying a piece of land and building our own home? House plan companies offer a myriad of blueprints to modify for site, code, budget, and climate conditions. Houseplans.com has over 40,000 choices. There are lots of companies to consider, but the best bets are one that are updating layouts for today's wish list. Open floor plans, multiple master suites, greater energy efficiency, and smaller footprints for downsizers. In fact, houseplans.com says their average plan is now for a 2,300 square foot home versus 3,500 square feet a few years ago. Many builders will accept these outsiders' plans, though they may charge to adapt them. Third, quartzite. While, while granite still appeals, quartzite is becoming the new hot contender thanks to its reputation as a natural stone that's virtually indestructible. 
It also more closely resembles the most luxe marble without the drawbacks of staining easily. Quartzite is a hard, non-foliated metamorphic rock which was originally pure quartz sandstone. Sandstone is converted into quartzite through heating and pressure usually related to tectonic compression within orogenic belts. I have no idea what any of that means, but they make really cool countertops. Quartzite's moving ahead of last year's favorite quartz, which is also tough but man-made. Fourth, multiple master suites. This is for you, Sunita. Having two master bedroom suites, each with its own adjoining bathroom, makes a work better, makes a house work better for multiple generations. Such an arrangement allows grown children and aging parents to move in for long or short-term stays, but the arrangement also welcomes out-of-town guests. When both suites are located on the main level, you hit the jackpot. Last, keyless entry. Forget your key again? No big deal as builders start to switch to biometric fingerprint door locks with numerical algorithms entered in a database. Some systems permit homeowners to track who entered and when. The coolest lock out there right now is the Kivo. You can use your smartphone to open your door, allow friends, family, and other visitors limited access to your home. How cool is that? Well, my husband calls me the typhoid Mary of electronics, so I would probably blow the house up with that keyless entry. <laughs> I don't know. But coral isn't the only color trending next year. In food, it's Marsala. Oh, wait, no, that's the hot color <laughs> trending for fashion. My bad. Actually, Adriana Sanchez is going to show us how to make the color work for both food and fashion. You won't want to miss this, so don't go away. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Next year, you'll be able to eat Marsala and also get it on your shirt. Well, not exactly, but Adriana <laughs> Sanchez is here to show you how you can glow with the hot color of the next year inside and out. Adriana, thanks for being here. So what, tell us all about this hot color. Thank you, thank you for having us. Yes, uh, Marcel is definitely the hot color for 2015. It's a beautiful, you know, bold color that you can mix and match with many different colors. And today I wanted to talk to you about some of the fashions that we have. Uh, our first model here, uh, Maribel, is uh, showcasing Marcella with a more neutral color and also kind of like uh, also showcasing some of the hot trends for spring and fall um, with a little bit of uh, light uh, metallic. So you, Marcella, you, you could definitely combine with a very uh, neutral and it looks very, very beautiful. It I kind love of that jacket. Helps, yes, and it just kind of pops out. And so again, Marcella is a very versatile color that it's really, really nice. And it's a warm, rich uh, red wine color, almost I could say, yeah. Now you're, you're pairing it with the metallics. Is that something that would be more of like an evening look or is that day or night? Oh, I guess it could be a day and night. Yeah, like she has a soft metallic jacket and she can actually wear that, let's say um, on the way to the office or maybe on a dinner date and then just kind of adds a little shimmer to the to the bold metallic color. And actually you're wearing the very nice metallic color yourself. And Look you're at this, a little Very beautiful center. yourself, you. yeah. Well, we wanted to coordinate with you, obviously. <laughs> Somehow we made, made yes, magic yes. work. And then Lee is wearing actually a, a kind of almost like a custard color uh, tie, which is perfect because our next model, Nuria, is actually wearing the custard uh, jumper, but also showcasing the Marsala. You can definitely, you know, mix and match a bold color like uh, the custard with the rich color of Marsala. And so again, it's a very versatile color that is going to be really big in 2015. We're really excited about it. 
Um, and you know, it's definitely a color too you can accessorize yourself with or just kind of mix and match with neutrals or more bold colors. It's perfect. I love wearing this color. But I'm, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm kind of getting 80s flashback here with, with the color combination. Is this like kind of a, you know, kind of modernizing the 80s style and the colors that we had Right. Then? Well, I think all fashions kind of just kind of go in like a cycle, right? Yep. And so they always kind of come back. But Marcel has always been really like a fall color, but definitely now that it's the hot color of 2015. So we'll see this we in springtime in too? In spring, summer, and fall, so the whole year round. So it's, it's, it, you can you know find a way to accessorize yourself with it or wear it to the office or night on the town or, you know, so it's definitely a color that you should be wearing. Are you gonna be wearing it? You know, I like Marsala. I like it with my chicken more so than <laughs> more so than my color palette. You know, I do notice that there's uh, women are wearing big necklaces. Are they called statement necklaces? Or? Statement, yeah. Jewelry. We're really, I'm really excited as a fashion person because I think jewelry is really uh, something that's really coming back. Real fashion statements. And so I'm actually wearing one myself right now. It's and actually, our, our our second model, Nuri, is also wearing a statement necklace, kind of again showcasing the Marsala. But definitely, if you can put on some fashion statements on a plain tee or anything like that. It's really just kind of makes your outfit pop. Well, speaking of Marcella, uh, you know, you are the CEO and, and founder and blogger for Palette to Palette. And the whole idea is that you should wear what you eat, kind of. Tell right. us about that. Yes, yes. So Palette to Palette is basically incorporating fashion and nutrition and a fusion of color all year round. And so we're excited with Marcella. So definitely, if you're wearing the color Marsala and you're looking fabulous like these young ladies are, and we should also be incorporating that color into your dinner table. So what do we have and here? So today I'm showcasing uh, pomegranate and pomegranate juice. Mm. And so uh, the benefits of pomegranate. Cheers. Um, <laughs> pomegranate is really, really important for uh, skin. You know, we usually have some pomegranate somehow in our um, <laughs> lotions and so forth. But you can, you know, if you eat it, you'll get the full nutrients and vitamins. It's really rich on vitamin C and vitamin K. Um, it's also really good for um, re uh, regenerating your skin. So just lots of beauty uh, benefits. But also for internal, it also helps with um, antioxidants. Um, it's good for your heart. So there's just a, a lot of benefits about eating uh, seasonal fruits um, and seasonal colors. And definitely, uh, Marcella is one of the colors that you can incorporate into your dinner table, like the pomegranate and po pomegranate juice. Well, I love that, you know, that, because even with pomegranates, I kind of associate it with fall, but I love that this is going to be a springtime and a full year-round thing, because I, I feel like I can work with it. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you and so much for having me. I, I love the idea of palette to palette, of, you know, just being able to have some variety with what you're eating, and you can base it on, on, on things you're seeing around us. Yes, yes. Because so it helps us remember that. Remember, yeah. So if anybody that's, that's seen today, make sure you pop the color, you feel wonderful with the color, and also incorporate the color for just internal beauty. Right, so. Thanks, Adriana, for being here. Lots more coming up in the next half hour. We'll show you some great kids' books to read with your little ones during the holiday break. And Santa left his sleigh in the garage and flew into Pasadena in a helicopter. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. Mm -hmm. disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile. Dang it. To the invisible jet. Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. 
car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. And now, from Pasadena, it's CCN Sunrise with Sunita Joshua Madison. Paulo Alejandria, the Crown City News team, and the CCN Sunrise Segment stars. It's time to wake up San Gabriel Valley with CCN Sunrise. We are back with our second half hour of CCN Sunrise. Coming up, what's with the bad TV dads out there who are supposed to be our role models? We'll talk about that on The Buzz when we come back. And I'm Sunita Joshua Madison. And I'm Lee Cuellar. And one of the perfect holiday books to read with your little ones. During the break, we have Pasadena Public Library Children's Librarian Jennifer Driscoll here to share her favorites. Speaking of things we're watching with our kids, you know, there was a study released recently that just talks about how kids' movies are more violent than most dramatic adult movies. Mm -hmm. And although that surprises me, it doesn't because there's so many movies I, I feel like with my, my son, I really just can't watch. Like, they're geared for him and he want, he's like, oh yeah, I want to see it. And I'm like, no, you're going to be disturbed for like a lifetime mm -hmm. with those. It's, you know, uh, we just watched uh, Big Hero 6 uh, with our daughter. And beyond the, the animation and the explosions and this and that, there, there did seem to be an awful lot of violence for a, for a film that's made for, for kids. And I know we're being a lot more protective of our kids because we watched like the Looney Tunes where they're banging you on the head and blowing people up. Um, I just couldn't have my son watch that anymore. Mm -hmm. But I grew up on it, so I might be a little <laughs> crazy. But... Who knows? <laughs> Could well, be other reasons. Well, you know, we all watch Bugs Bunny, Wile E. Coyote. Wile E. Coyote takes a beating yeah, from absolutely. the Roadrunner. And, and we seem to we seem to think that was okay. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm reassessing, but we'll, we'll figure that out. And now Paula Alejandria with the news. And now, CCN, Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood starts right now. Hi, Sunita and Lee. Here's a look at some news headlines happening right here in the San Gabriel Valley. Santa will rev up his sleigh this Christmas Eve, but he took a helicopter into Pasadena last week to deliver toys for the ninth annual Christmas Toy Drive. Also known as Operation Polar Wind, the Pasadena Police Air Operations Section and Foothill Air Support Team, or FAST, made a special delivery flying Santa in on a helicopter to deliver toys on December 16th to children throughout the city. Chief Philip Sanchez escorted him to various locations, including the pediatrics ward at Huntington Memorial Hospital. Santa also met with families with peace over violence at the Pasadena Police Heliport to take pictures and hand out presents. A proud Chief Sanchez sent holiday cheer to everyone and said, This toy drive was a tremendous success through the generosity and kindness of fast law enforcement agencies that raised over $4,000 to purchase toys. Their unselfish giving brought holiday cheer to many deserving children in Pasadena. The annual toy drive is funded through contributions of the police employees and officer associations who participate in the FAST program throughout the San Gabriel Valley. It's on everyone's must-see list of places with the best Christmas decorations. CCN's Andy Rocco visited Upper Hastings Ranch to let you take a walk through Winter Wonderland. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Rocco. With Christmas just right around the corner, who isn't excited to see a street filled with lights? We're in Upper Hastings Ranch where the neighborhood is glowing. Upper Hastings Ranch has been decorating their streets and homes since 1957. It's known to be popular as local venues, Christmas Tree Lane and Bali and Mansion. Well, I just think they're really beautiful. It's good that people are celebrating the Christmas spirit. Many families spend the evenings walking through the neighborhood, admiring the lights and elaborate decorations. We live in the neighborhood and we come by uh, to check out all the new Christmas lights every year and everyone enjoys it. Local hikers and runners make the neighborhood their annual holiday route. We just ran up one of the streets and they had um, the names of peace in all different languages. I thought that was really beautiful. 
Upper Hastings Ranch neighborhood will be displaying their Christmas lights between mid-December and January 1st. In Pasadena, Andy Rocco, CCN Sunrise. That's it for the news. Back to you, Sunita and Lee. Thanks, Paolo. And it's time for the morning buzz once again. Many cities are going high-tech in surveillance and predictive crime behavior software. Is this a good thing or is Big Brother going too far in the name of safety? It just seems like they're getting more and more information and they're not even going to know what to do with this information. They're going to stop everyone, frisk everyone and say, well, we have this right because, you know, we, we predicted you were going to do something bad. Right. Yeah. Is this I, enough? Well, again, I think it gets back to the fact that we live in a very different time right now. And I know people get concerned about that. At the same time, these, these same people are posting everything about their lives on Facebook, Twitter, every form of, of social media. That's, that's the world today. Um, I think where it becomes problematic is when you target specific areas. In Boston, for example, they used surveillance cameras only in low-income neighborhoods, mm -hmm. which is pretty unfair. And, uh, uh, but I think overall, I mean, we live in an open world. Everybody sees what everybody's doing. We carry these phones around that, you know, have all sorts of information that people can track our, our every movement. But we're, we're not getting arrested and, and you know, jailed um, because of what we're putting on Facebook. Not necessarily. I mean, obviously that's there. But, you know, with these where they can use just the minor detail to stop and search um, your belongings, that's where it, there's a slippery slope here. Doesn't seem fair. Yeah, no, there, there, there is, but imagine technology in 10 years when Google Maps is going to be taking photos not from 20,000 feet, but from 10 feet. Well, uh, it's scary. You, you know, and, and Pasadena has spent, you know, thousands of dollars on, on some of this software, and, you know, I know that it's making a, a, a dent on crime, but it's almost too much information. I know in Seattle, you know, they were just talking about the body cameras and LAPD is, you know, putting right. in the body cameras um, and, and making that widespread. But, you know, someone had sued the Seattle police wanting all dashboard camera information. And they're like, we can't even process that. Right. So is this just, it, it's too much, it's too overwhelming. Are they really going to be able to do something with it and make it effective? Yeah. What do you think, Lee? Do you think they're going to, it's <clears throat> going to be effective? Uh, it, it, I think that it's going to be a long, long time before it's before it's actually effective. You know, where uh, where does the uh, the uh, the body cameras that the LAPD are, are getting over the next couple of years from private funds, which is interesting to me. Where does that where's that data stored? How much data can be stored? Like how long? How you know? Are you going to in a in a in a police officer's eight or twelve hour shift? How much is it going to be? Uh, captured? How much uh, data is it going to store, right? Yeah. And can they turn it on and off? Right. Right, right. if they're not in, a, in a, right. uh, a stop of, a crime stop of some sort. Well, in Rialto right now, uh, just down the road, they've been using police cameras for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And what they found is whether or not the cameras are actually in use, the fact that they're there um, has an effect on the officers in terms of their behavior when they're arresting Everyone's somebody. on guard. Oh, Everyone's on guard. guard. I like well, that. someone exactly. who should be on guard, uh, Seventh Heaven Dad <clears throat> Stephen Collins admits to doing some very bad things to young girls. Um, that's on the heels of the Cosby chaos. Who's next, Mr. C? I mean, God rest your soul on that, but are our happy days gone forever? Uh, uh, where, what's happening with these, these role model dads? I love oh. that, rest, that, ref, that reference, love it. Yeah, it's Mr. C wouldn't be caught doing all this. Absolutely would he? not. Absolutely not. You, you never know. <laughs> um, we put a lot of stock in a character that somebody plays on television, and that character isn't necessarily that person. I think what's really interesting, though, is the way. I mean, what what people, how people have conducted themselves in the past is the past, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. What's, what's interesting to me is watching the differences between these two gentlemen in terms of how they're handling it now. One being somewhat open Admitting and upfront, and I'm the flawed. other one being closed off. And how is that going to pay off in the end? 
is that, you know, whose reputation is going to be most impacted by the way they handle this? That's a very good point. What do you, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, Collins was sort of, it seems to me that Stephen Collins was sort of forced to deal with yeah. it because yeah. his the recordings were released, right? They were not, uh, uh, he was sessions. recorded by, uh, uh, not that the therapist didn't know, he didn't know that his uh, sessions were being recorded. Right. So he had to deal with it. It's not like, it's not like he had this come to Jesus moment where he said, I've, I've done wrong and now I have to atone for my sins. Yeah. Well, and it, so, unfortunately, you know, uh, I don't know about Cosby. He's not admitting anything, but Stephen Collins is going to get away with it because statute of limitations have run out. And that's why he is being so open um, mm -hmm. about this. And I appreciate the openness, but how hypocritical to have this in your past. And then, I mean, I, I, I hear your point on they're just playing a role, but I don't know, just how do you, how do you fake it so well? I, I, give the man an Oscar. They're actors. I they're know. actors, Sanita. Give the man an That's Oscar. That's what they do for a living. I, but I think we need, to be, we, we need to understand, too, this isn't new. We live in a more transparent era right now. And there so. are many families who have you know, these hidden secrets, and they also get to get away with it. And it's, it's Look at the movie stars and TV stars of 40, Yesterday, 50 years ago. Absolutely. I mean. Murders and more. Well, <laughs> Stephen Lambert joined us. He's a strategic communication, str communication strategist with 2020 Network. Uh, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Thanks, thank you. Coming up next is reading the night before Christmas out loud part of your family tradition? It really should be. Children's librarian Jennifer Driscoll is here to tell us what other books should be a part of your holiday reading tradition with your kids next. all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. During these holidays, there are more fires in the home than any other time of the year. By following a few simple tips from Shriners Hospitals for Children, you could keep your home's fire safe and your kids burn free this holiday season. Place your tree at least three feet away from any open fire or heat source. Always inspect lights for frayed wires, kinks, or bare spots before putting them up. Connect lights and other electrical decorations to proper extension cords. Never leave lit candles unattended. Learn how you can be burn aware at beburnaware.org. 
If you want new ideas, the best books to read with your little ones this holiday season, Jennifer Driscoll, children's librarian with the Pasadena Public Library, is here with some ideas. What kinds of books are, are perfect? Because I'm running out of ideas, <laughs> and the kid's home for quite a long time with this break. <laughs> yes, and kids always like to read the same books over and over again, right? So it's always nice to have so some new books to word. infuse. <laughs> exactly, they know it better than you do at some point. So I have some of my favorites for uh, Christmas as well as some other holidays here. Um, one of my favorites is Just Right for Christmas. This is a great story. A king finds a bolt of beautiful red fabric and he thinks it's gonna make a beautiful cloak for his daughter. So when they're finished making it, they leave the fabric outside the door while someone else comes along and picks it up and it's kind of a trickle down effect Aww, for Christmas presents. It's like presents. the Christmas bell being passed Exactly, it keeps going and going and going and as it says, it is a just right for Christmas story. It's especially good if you're very eco-conscious because they use every bit of that fabric in this story, really fun. <laughs> um, another pick that I really like is too Many Tamales by Gary Soto. Uh, this is a wonderful story about Maria. She is making tamales with her mother and she's feeling very grown up to be helping. Uh, but she would feel even better if she could wear her mom's diamond ring. So without her mom knowing. Smart girl. I know. <laughs> she puts the diamond ring on and starts kneading the masa. Oh, I see where this is And oh, doesn't no. realize that Crunch. <laughs> it falls off and doesn't notice until the tamales are baked and then what is there it, she to do, except there are too many tamales. To go and, through. Yes. Oh well, so. I love that idea because, you know, um, making tamales is such a big tradition yep. for Hispanic families. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it until moving to Los Angeles. Yep. And what a production is it is. And I'm kind of jealous. I want to make tamales. I know. And they're delicious, right? Every Christmas. And this has a really great story of family coming together at the end. Exactly what you want to do around do you make Christmas tamales? time. Oh, yeah. You, every, you, every, yeah. Every Christmas, really? uh, my wife goes and with her niece nieces, nephews, sisters, it's, it's a big Mexican family. Oh, and it's I a love big it. deal. Several, you know, a week before Christmas, they're kneading masa, putting it together, <laughs> filling, you know, doing the fillings. And on Christmas Day, we have an enormous, like, I didn't know they made pans that big with three of those full of tamales. Oh, well, if you need a taste delicious. tester, you just <laughs> let me know. I'll make you a care package. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> um, some other fun books that we have, uh, Santa Duck, which you can see right here, uh, by David Milgram. This is a great story. It's uh, Christmas Eve, and Nicholas Duck wakes up and realizes he hasn't told Santa what he wants for the holidays. So he steps out onto his porch and sees a package there that contains an official Santa hat. Ooh. And when Ooh. he puts it on, he notices all his friends, the animals, are coming up and telling him what they want for Christmas. And he eventually runs into <laughs> Santa and becomes kind of the messenger for the other wishes, but really realizes he has forgotten to tell Santa what he wants. Oh, no. So this is a really, Oops. really fun book. I've read it with a lot of classes, and you always get a chuckle, especially from hearing what the animals want for Christmas. And I can guarantee you your family will be singing Jingle Quack instead of oh, Jingle okay. Bells after reading this one. Are we going to like this? Yes. <laughs> Thank it's you for that turn. warning. Yes. <laughs> but it is a really great book. And of course, around the holidays, Christmas isn't the only thing that we celebrate, but there are great books out there for families to share no matter what you celebrate. Um, it's the end of Hanukkah, but a great story to read is Hanukkah Bear. This is actually a retelling of a story that Eric Kimmel wrote in 1990, kind of a new updated version. And it's about Bubba Brena, who's 97. She can't really see, can't really hear, but she does make the best potato latkes. So, the smell of those wakes up old bear and he comes and oh. knocks on her door and Baba Brina is expecting the rabbi and since she can't hear or see very well, she invites the bear into her house for a lot because so oh. this Big. is a very funny and growling good story. Bubby's grandma. Bubby's grandma. Bubby means grandma. Yeah. Oh, okay. Grandma <laughs> Brina. <laughs> I'm like, what? It's grandma, Bubby. Yeah. Um, but so I love one. the food thing. Yes. Because obviously for, you know, a lot of our traditions, family traditions, food such a, you know, brings everyone together. It is, right? Whether tamales or latkes, it's great to gather around the dining room table for uh, the holidays. And one last one I wanted to talk about was Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa, because Kwanzaa, of course, comes right after Christmas. And it's really hard to find a good story about Kwanzaa. There are a lot of that discuss the seven principles, but not many that wrap it into a story the mm -hmm. great way that Donna Washington does in Little Rabbit. Rabbit's Kwanzaa. So in this story, uh, Little Rabbit loves Kwanzaa, especially the caramu, the great 
feast at the end. But this year, uh, his grandma is sick, and so he wants to do something really special for her, but he doesn't know what. So he sets out to the forest, and uh, the prize that uh, he gets, or the surprise he has planned for her, surprises even him. So it's a really wonderful story, um, all about family, and it really integrates those seven principles of Kwanzaa into the story. Well, thank you so much Great. for sharing this variety, because you know we're definitely going to be reading the Christmas books and celebrating Christmas, but I definitely want to have my son you know, read some of the other traditions and, and, and things that make other kids excited. Oh, of course. Well, thank you so much for having me here. And you know, uh, the holidays are really about togetherness, and there's no better gift that you can give to your children than spending the time sitting down and reading with them. So absolutely right. <laughs> At uh, the Pasadena Public Library. Exactly. Why not? <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Bet you haven't seen Sleeping Beauty as a panto. If you don't know what panto is, Valerie Milano will tell you all about it in CCN Entertainment next. So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome. Excuse me, sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. The door's locked, knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't stare, don't use bad language. You talk with your mouthful, keep your elbows off the table. What table? You don't interrupt. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, keep your seat up to anybody who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you want to be treated. Got it? Got it. Good talk. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. but I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Every day across America, Excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks. Giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Sing. And Tommy can't dance. So we're, we're gonna, gonna put, put some hands in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. The Pasadena Playhouse is giving you Sleeping Beauty Panto style. Valerie Milano is here to tell you all about Panto in CCN Entertainment.
Sierra Madre's one book, One City Choice for 2015 is none other than Raymond Chandler's L.A. noir classic, The Long Goodbye, published in 1953 and featuring his famous detective, Philip Marlowe. Chandler wrote the book during one of the most difficult times in his life. Chandler called the novel, My Best Book. The One Book, One City Committee has planned a month of exciting events celebrating Chandler and the L.A. noir genre. Speaker Sybil Ann Davis, Sierra Madre resident, who spent her formative years with Chandler, will be giving a talk entitled, Just Call Me Ray, Personal Reflections on My Life with Raymond Chandler. All events will take place at the Sierra Madre Public Library and will kick off on Saturday, January 31st, 2015. Let's face it, the holidays wouldn't be the holidays without a good panto. For those of you wondering what a panto is, it's a traditional fairy tale complete with songs, dances, jokes, and of course, exaggerated characters. Well, the Pasadena Playhouse and Lithgow Family Productions knows how to serve up a great panto. Past pantos at the Playhouse Productions include A Snow White Christmas starring Ariana Grande and Neil Patrick Harris, and Aladdin and His Winter Wish, starring Ben Vereen and Bruce Valanche. This year is certainly no exception. Keeping up with its reputation for great holiday entertainment, the Playhouse presents Sleeping Beauty and Her Winter Night as the panto of choice for this holiday season. The cast features Lucy Lawless from Xena, Warrior Princess, and Spartacus, and also Patrick Cassidy as the King of Pasadena from Broadway's 42nd Street and Annie Get Your Gun. Patrick returns from last year's Fantastic Panto at the Playhouse production of Aladdin and His Winter Wish, Ben Giroux as Silly Billy from CW's Heart of Dixie. Sleeping Beauty and Her Winter Night plays through January 4th, 2015 at the Pasadena Playhouse. And for more information, check out their website, pasadenaplayhouse.org. Finally, LA84 Foundation President Anita de France joined sports leaders from around the world in Monaco last week as the International Olympic Committee held a series of meetings that will change the way LA bids to host the 2024 Summer Olympic Games. The Olympic leaders also launched new initiatives to improve coverage of Olympic sports year round. The series of the new initiatives approved by the International Olympic Committee last week are also seen as favorable for the aspirations of many local leaders, including our own Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, to have Los Angeles host the Summer Olympics Games in 2024. Earlier this year, the Southern California Committee for the Olympic Games began sharing its ideas for a model constellation of Olympic venues that could revitalize the area around the Los Angeles Coliseum a legacy of the 1932 and the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Under new plans approved last week, the Olympic bid process will be by invitation only. Having prominent Southern California leaders, sports leaders play an active role in Olympic initiatives can be val very valuable. That's it for now. We gotta start chanting, we want the Olympics, we want, we the, want the Olympics. Olympics. Let's make it happen. That's it for now, and we'd like to thank all of our sponsors for supporting our show. Big thanks also to Stephen Lambert with the 2020 Network, Adriana Sanchez from Palette to Palette, and her models Maribel Valadez and Nuria Martinez, and Pasadena Public Library's Children's Librarian Jennifer Driscoll for joining us in studio. And thanks also to all our segment stars and crew, and especially to you out there watching us. Enjoy the rest of your day, and have a very Merry Christmas, and enjoy the rest of Hanukkah, and Happy Kwanzaa. Do it all. And we want the Olympics. We do. Crime City News is sponsored by Foothill Transit, San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership, Pasadena Federal Credit Union, Senior Providers Network, Ability First, Beacon Media News, EH Financial, Ganal Lumber, Siren Arts Productions. You too can sponsor Crown City News. Call 626-344-8314 or email sponsors at crowncitynews.com. Thank you for your support of Crown City News.